And then once again, everything is all as well. That is until Raditz shows Oh. Hey guys, Marsico X here. Now this idea comes from a couple of people from over on my subreddit, r slash X, where you can share your ideas directly with me, as well as just generally share content to do with the channel, or things that are cool in Dragon Ball really, which other users may find interesting. But I have to give shout outs to BatKing21, Megas88 and RefuTD for providing inspiration to what we are about to suppose. There was one event which could be described as one of the most pivotal moments in the Dragon World lore. Something which moved the action off of planet Earth and off into space, taking it to the stars as I say. Something which gave Dragon Ball Z its own identity when compared to its initial series and really made it clear it was going to be something different. And it all has to do with Raditz because we all know he's awesome and where he goes and really what he decides to do. So today's idea is what if Raditz never came to Earth? Really? It took you this long, Masako? Well, yeah. I thought it'd be one of those things that I would save for a future lightning round due to its brevity and the fact that, oh, if Raditz doesn't show up, then not a lot happens. But it was something that was definitely worth thinking about for all the things that we knew that would eventually happen. So, okay, at the time of Z's beginning, there wasn't really anything you could do, or at least that's what I thought. But given what we know going forward, ages 761 and beyond, I think we can work something out. But let's go back to Raditz because we all like Raditz. Raditz was the thing that revealed a lot to us, the audience, as well as the characters. Sure, he may not have been the strongest character going, in fact he was pretty weak for a Saiyan especially, but when it came to narrative importance, he was a powerhouse. He had something going for him after all. Let's set the scene. Raditz still goes off to look for his brother Kakarot, but let's suppose that the information that he got from either the Saiyan pod records or Bardock's inklings from what he can remember was somehow incorrect. Raditz never found out that his brother was living on Eoth, and so he set about on a blind search for his brother to then bring him back to the Freezer Force and into the servitude of both the Emperor as well as Prince Vegeta to show that he was actually useful. Would Vegeta and Nappa allow Raditz to do this? Well, I think they would. First off, if Raditz was right and his brother came back, then great, they'd have two dog's bodies to torment. And secondly, hey, if Raditz was wrong, then he'd be out of their hair once and for all and nothing would be holding them down. No weaklings or liabilities. It's a win-win as far as the two Saiyan elites are concerned. I mean, they don't care about Raditz, but we care. So Raditz was free to start roaming the galaxy, searching for the planet where his brother may be residing. The only clues that he could piece together was that the world was a pretty low value one and that it was very far away from Frieza's central sphere of influence. That's it. He didn't care if it took him months or years. He would find his brother. Good luck with that, Raditz. Bye bye! Yeah, up until this point Raditz never finds Earth, or at the very least he doesn't arrive on the planet when the start of Dragon Ball Z is meant to be occurring. All of this means an absolute ton of information is never revealed to the main cast at that point in time. The biggest one being is that Goku never finds out on Earth that he is a Saiyan, nor that his son Gohan is a Saiyan hybrid with huge potential. The young child isn't tested in the way that we are accustomed to. And as for Piccolo, he and Goku never have to team up. And then Namekian doesn't even find out about that fact. Yeah, seriously, there's a lot of stuff that they don't find out at this point. He continues to remain in a life of solitude, practicing all on his lonesome, waiting for the day when he feels ready to take on Goku again and avenge his father, which is what's about to happen. So Goku and Gohan arrive at Kame House as per normal and the gang are having an absolutely fantastically splashing time. They didn't find out that Goku had a kid until he just walks up and goes, Hey, I have a kid. However, I get the feeling that Piccolo would use this time to make his return. <gasps> Masako, are you suggesting that we get an alternative arc? Yes! Raditz was the grounds for a temporary truce between Goku and Piccolo, but with the Saiyan out of the picture, Piccolo has no reason to hold back, and he has something to test out his new technique on, the special beam cannon. Yes, he still uses it on Goku, but this time he means business. So what we then witness is a role reversal. Piccolo kidnaps Gohan so as to coax Goku into fighting him one-on-one -on -one without any interference unlike the last time. No tournaments, 
no honourable forgiveness or getting someone to say sorry, this is the chance for King Piccolo to have his justice for real this time. The last instance, pfft, that was just a fluke. The battle between Goku and Piccolo is a pretty savage one, with Goku really getting into the swing of things, and has the overall advantage going into the battle, with both parties using weighted clothing, as we know, to the fore. Gohan is left sat there, in the distance, cheering his dad on, thinking that this is absolutely great, Goku, his dad, will just sort everything out, and then they can all go home for tea. But something is amiss. Piccolo decides to use the brat to his advantage once again, and aims a blast directly at Gohan, which activates his potential, and the kid is able to survive the explosion. But when the dust clears and Goku has gone over to comfort his son, Piccolo is gone. He disappeared. Where, where'd he go? Goku decides to wait and sense for Piccolo's energy, but he can't find anything. Well, at least anything that resembles the key that he felt from the demon just a moment ago. Minutes pass and still nothing. Goku is thinking about taking Gohan and going home so he can regroup, or at least get him out of danger, when his son then spots something sparking behind a bunch of trees. A purple and gold flash is emanating 20 feet away. Then it hits Goku. It's him! Piccolo then rolls out from the side and shouts, SPECIAL BEAM CANNON! The line of purple and gold energy shoots out at a fantastic speed and catches Goku square in the chest, with Gohan watching on in horror. Goku collapses to the ground, motionless and Piccolo walks up to the now-defeated rival of his, stunned that he actually won. Goku isn't actually upset, nor is he scared. <laughs> Looks like you got the jump on me, Piccolo. What? You're not gonna say anything about me endangering the world? Nah, I know that's not what you want anymore. You just wanted to get your revenge on me for what your dad is all. You got what you wanted. <laughs> Good fight. And with that, Goku falls unconscious and is no more. His body vanishes, and Gohan is left distraught. Piccolo is left standing there, not sure what to do. His main goal is indeed complete, and now he has nothing to live for. Maybe he could see to more of his father's ideals like Goku said? Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what he does want after all. Yeah, Goku gave him the idea to try and take over the world. <laughs> Goku, you should have just stayed quiet. And maybe that kid, he could be the start of his cause. He could be his minion. You know, Piccolo had minions, so his son should have a minion too. There must be some kind of potential hidden in the kid if he was able to take a direct explosion from one of Piccolo's attacks. And with that, Piccolo walks up to Gohan and knocks him out before whisking the child away into the mountains, ready to indoctrinate him into the Piccolo cause. By the time the gang arrive on the scene, they can't sense Goku anymore, nor Piccolo's energy for that matter. This was the last place that they could sense Goku, and now it's gone. The only trace left was a red patch on the ground. Oh no, is Goku in the other world? Krillin and the others are left extremely saddened by this event. Piccolo had gotten what he wanted. If only Goku had just finished him off back in the tournament, none of this would have happened. And now Chi Chi has lost both her husband and her son in just a matter of minutes. Well, there's no other option. They have to gather the Dragon Balls without catching Piccolo's attention. A challenging task, especially since the balls were just used recently. Well, now what happens? Well, I get the feeling that Goku still goes to King Kai at the request of Kami for his duty to the planet Earth before all of this. King Yama is skeptical at this proposition, but then looks at the mountain of paperwork that is attached to Goku's dossier. Does he really want to have to process this right now? I mean, he's got millions of souls to deal with right now, which are just, yeah, one rubber stamp. That's it. So much easier. Better to just let Goku do his thing and deal with the ramifications, if any, later. And hey, if he ends up being brought back to life, he won't have to do the paperwork. It's a win for King Yama as far as he's concerned. And to top this all off, Kami can sense that the Earthlings are planning to use the balls soon, and that might mean that they will bring Goku back in about a year's time. Well, Masako, wh why are you doing this? I wondered what might have happened if Piccolo didn't have to tow the line or anything, and he could actually just go after Goku and take him out, instead of just letting him do his thing. So without Raditz around, I feel that resolution would be fully realised here. Goku goes to King Kai's and goes through the trials and tribulations that go with it before starting his training. Okay, I got about six or so months before my buddies bring me back, so can you teach me all you know, King Kai? What the? I got some kind of training dispenser, Saiyan! Say what? A Saiyan! You're a Saiyan! No, I'm not. I'm a human. From Earth. Don't you remember I, I just said that? Oh, you don't know. 
Yeah, well, I suppose somebody ought to tell you what you are. And so Goku finds out that he is a Saiyan from King Kai, as well as the whole truth about what happened to them, including the bit about Lord Frieza, you know, being the instigator of the Saiyan's destruction and downfall, and resulting saving of Goku's life. Yeah, King Kai's seen it all. And I know that he doesn't do it in the original Saiyan Saga timeline, but that was before Toriyama or Toei really knew what was going to happen. But what we do know now, we can retroactively add. And for those of you wondering, well, why would King Kai know this? Uh... He's the North Kai of North Galaxy. He would know. King Kai also reveals that Goku has a brother who is currently searching the galaxy for him as we speak. Wow, really? I have a brother? Awesome! Can I go meet him? Uh, you won't want to, Goku. Saiyans aren't like the kind of people who like to have a friendly chat. He would end you if he knew that you had a good heart. You'd hurt his pride. But if you train me, maybe I can change his ways and demoralize him? Hmm. Ah, sure, why not? It's not like I got anything better to do. King Kai just goes along with it because it's a dang sight more entertaining than just driving his Bel Air around and around his asteroid for the nth time. Now back on Earth, Piccolo is getting nowhere with Gohan as the boy is pretty resistant to the demon's training or whatever he's trying to say. He's just crying like a toddler would. As far as the boy is concerned, this demon man offed his father and there is nothing he can say that will make him like him, ever. Piccolo didn't want to have to do this, but when the kid is asleep, after tiring himself out from all the crying, he uses his telepathy powers to haunt Gohan's nightmares and turn Goku into some kind of monster in disguise. And that Piccolo is the hero Gohan needs right now. In the mind of a four or five year old, these dreams are super vivid and something that would carry over to the waking world. Oh, hey, you had that dream again, kid? Well, that ain't no dream. That's a vision. You're seeing the world without your father clouding it. He's manipulating the kid's outlook on life and making him change sides. That's downright dirty, Piccolo. And man, that's cold. And I think that's something that this version of Piccolo would do. And I think it's actually kind of interesting. So after months of this, Piccolo succeeds in strengthening Gohan's resolve and in turning him over to the ways of the Daimao. He even gives the kid a uniform, which has the symbol of King Piccolo on it. A twisted little nod to Goku's gi. Another way of Piccolo turning the screw on how he beat Goku, finally. Now, they've also been able to perfect their energy attacks, with Gohan learning the Masenko, like he does in the original, and Piccolo perfecting the special beam cannon to the point where it requires minimal charging, unlike his hiding tactics from the fight with Goku, and it doesn't take five minutes or so. Not only that, but... Goku has learnt Kaioken, and is well on his way to mastering the Genki Dama when Kami gets into contact with him. Goku, the Earthlings have gathered the Dragon Balls and are bringing you back now. Expect a little surprise shortly. Sure enough, by gathering the balls slowly over the year, they manage to sneak under the nose of Piccolo. You know, the demon, fortunately, is far too distracted by warping Gohan's mind to notice all of the Dragon Balls being used. And Goku's halo disappears. King Kai congratulates Goku's return to the land of the living, and the Saiyan now flies away back to the check-in desk. Unfortunately, he hasn't fully mastered the Genki Dama yet. That might come back to bite him later. Kami then tells Roshi and Bulma via telepathy that Goku will be with them in a day or so and to sit tight. The gang are pleased, but Piccolo and Gohan are still missing. And as Goku's heading home, Piccolo and Gohan continue to train together for months and months. Even when Goku gets back and is pleased to see everyone, he is still enraged and concerned that Piccolo is out there somewhere and that he took his son and that he has the gumption to hide from them like some kind of coward. However, Goku knows that he is strong enough to beat Piccolo properly this time and this time he will not be giving any second chances. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you guys think? Do you like the idea that Piccolo and Gohan are a new equivalent to Vegeta and Nappa? How will Goku handle having to fight against his own son? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later.